Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, and in this video, I'm going to have a look at one of my own personal ways of just breaking some of my photography habits. Um, probably not that many of them because uh, you pick up an awful lot over the years and it takes a conscious effort to actually do it. But what I'm doing is I'm having a look at a lens that cost me all of £7.50. Now the lens is the Jupiter 11A and uh, it's an old Soviet lens. Serial number suggests that this particular lens was made in 1975. Now, 1975, I was 15, and uh, my camera at the time was a Zenith E, a Russian, uh, Russian camera. This is not, was not my lens then. Um, I couldn't have afforded a lens like this then, even one of the Soviet ones, which were not, uh, yeah, not expensive, but uh, still not cheap when you're 15. And um, it's fully manual. It's um, based on an old uh, Zeiss design, I believe, Zeiss Sonar. It's 135 millimeter F4. Um, the internal structure of it's only got sort of four elements, but the huge great lumps of glass inside. It's quite hefty. It is uh, a brass lens. It's a metal lens. It's a solid lens. Now this lens has got all kinds of little scratches and marks on the, so you can see the metal shining through it. It's a 42 mil screw fit lens. Now I've been using this with uh, Canon EOS RP. Uh, mainly because uh, it's the one I use for videos. And in fact, I'm using an adapted lens for shooting this. I've got an Olympus 24 mm lens, manual focus, everything is the one that I use for all the videos. But this one, 135 mil, it's F4 to F22. Um, the aperture in it is quite a nice smooth, it's 12 blade aperture, so it's all very solid. Screw fit, I've got an adapter here from screw fit to EF mount. Um, I've then used the adapter on the EOS RP to go from EF mount to RF mount. I use the RP because uh, with lenses like this, uh, focus peaking is an absolute godsend for focusing. Now, one bit about this, there are no click stops on the aperture. You have to actually set the aperture. There's obviously no electronics, so there's no EXIF data other than the shutter speed and your ISO. Uh, so it's a bit of guesswork working out exactly what settings were uh, that the lens was used at. But anyway, it's a it's an interesting lens. It's nice. Um, quick checks of it showed that, yeah, it works. There's no uh, there's no muck inside it. Um, looks pretty clear. There are rudimentary coatings on it. Absolutely nothing compared to the coatings you'll get these days. Um, but nice lens. One bit I would say on it, and this is a um, shot of a swan down at the river that I took just whilst doing it. The focus throw on this must be about 320 degrees. So that's almost a complete turn to go from infinity to closest focus. Closest focus on this is listed as a meter. And so it, it focuses relatively closely for an old lens like this. Some of them don't close focus any closer than they're about one and a half to two meters. But this one, there's a whole lot. But that's a lot of turning. It means that even a sm something like this swan moving at a relatively close distance is quite tricky to keep the focus updated. And that's where the focus peaking is really used. Anyway, that's, you know, that's a lens. That's the technicals of it. What about some of the reasons for actually taking a, you know, a lens like this out and taking some photos? Well, part of it is it forces you to take photos with a particular focal length. Um, if I wanted 135mm, um, I would probably use my EF 70 to 200 zoom. It's 2.8 lens, really good lens. Um, it's got image stabilizing. Why would I use anything else? Well, this is much smaller, but I don't really care about that. Um, really, this is because it makes me use 135mm. 135mm is not a focal length I use very often. It simply doesn't occur. My work is often is industrial work in foundries, in factories, architectural photography. I enjoy landscape photography. Um, I don't do people work at all, so I'm not interested in a portrait lens. Um, although some people do say there's quite a nice look to this lens, um, works quite well for that. 
that's not the sort of stuff I do. Um, but even so, I want to take it out and I want to have a go at doing a few other different things because um, even if it's in a relatively constrained area, because I just went out for a walk in my you know, local area to take some pictures, even if it's relatively constrained, the actual thought of having to take photos through something like this, um, having to think about aperture, having to think about exposure and everything is useful. Now, it's not that different to me because my day-to-day -day lenses are tilt-shift lenses. So I use things like the Canon TSC-17, TSC-24, so wide-angle lenses. They're manual focus. Um, I, have, I use them in manual mode, so that bit's not tricky. And I would say if you're not used to using manual mode, get a lens, any old lens like this, and practice using your camera in fully manual mode. Um, Particularly, I did a, a video recently about changing light around dusk. That almost always requires some manual use. Get used to it. It just helps you get more comfortable with using your camera. Yeah, I know you can do auto everything, but auto everything means some of us are, oh, well, I can concentrate on taking the picture. No, you're not. You're, 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 you're missing the bit about setting the camera up to enable you to get the pictures you want. Um, now, I know a lot of people hate the idea of manual focus and everything. Well, that's all there was back when this was out, um, and uh, I never had any problems then. Yeah, I probably got a few less sharply focused images than maybe. But now, with focus peaking, um, even using this wide open f4.5 worked perfectly well. But let's have a look at a few images. Just down the road, some uh, electric bikes scheme in the city for it. This is taken at about f5.6. Um, most lenses like this, if you stop them down a bit, the quality improves. With this one, with four, I've got some shots I'll show in, in, in a bit to show the, the changes of it, but it's as you'd expect. At f4, there's a little bit of softness. Uh, the resolution is not really there, particularly over the whole frame. Drop it to 5.6, the lens gets much sharper, it's appreciably sharper. Um, take it to f8 and it's good enough for general use. In fact, quite a lot of the time if I wander around with this, I would just have it set to f8. Uh, as I say, do remember though that there are no click stops on this. Now, I'm sure people who do video will find that very attractive. Uh, for me, it's just a minor irritation, but um, there you go. Uh, nice and sharp. See the out of focus areas, there's nothing nasty going on in the out of focus areas of it, it doesn't look troubled. Um, you get some lenses, you've got it, and the, the out of focus just looks wrong. Now, I know some people go into uh, to great lengths to find lenses with interesting out of focus areas or bokeh, um, but I'm going to be honest, it doesn't cut much ice with me um, as long as it doesn't look bad, then I'm not terribly bothered. Um, I suppose it comes from the fact that a lot of my work involves having a lot of stuff very sharp and very clear. Um, I've never particularly been a great fan of making use of fuzziness in the pictures. Now, I do sometimes, but I'm almost always using it for an effect. Now, here's a sequence. This will just run through, give you an idea, because I know a lot of people are curious about how it looks out of focus. Um, the lens here is focused at about six feet in front of me, and I'm looking down a river, um, so effectively I'm looking into the distance. Now, the spot in this, and I'll show this later, is actually a reflection of sunlight off a cyclist's lamp that's heading towards me. Makes a very nice point source, and this is at 4.5, and it shows it's really, yeah, you know, it's quite nice. Um, I, there's probably a term for this particular look. Um, yeah, you'll have to have a look at people who do a lot of lens testing and things for stuff like that. To me, it just looks pleasantly smooth and it's what I'd expect out of focus. Take it to 5.6. Yeah, obviously, it's uh, depth of field is uh, increasing, um, but not much because remember, it's a 135 mil lens. I've got it focused about, you know, six feet away from me and I'm deliberately shooting with it unfocused like this to see it. So take it with that, take it on to the next one and it gets a little bit sharper, there we go, and a bit more. Now this is somewhere around f22, 
As I said, there's no click stops on it. It could be F16. I'm not entirely certain. I was concentrating on what's coming here. And you can see the cyclist with a high-vis jacket on. And you can see it. And you get a nice look. And this is, uh, say, F16, F22. Out of focus area. Still looks quite reasonable. Um, you know, I, I think we just... There's detail of what that, that spot looked like. At, uh, that's at F4. And, yeah, looks fine. I'm sure there are ones that look better, ones that look worse, but that looks great. Now, actual photos, because um, there's only so much of actually sort of testing a lens that I do. I'll, I'll do enough to, and this goes for when I'm reviewing proper lenses as well, I'll do enough testing to say, yes, it works, here are some issues. Uh, beyond that, I'm more interested in, you know, do I want to use the lens for some photography? Um, one of the buildings that will be familiar if you've seen any of my reviews of tilt shift lenses and things, this is at De Montfort University, not very far from where I live. Um, just trying to see how, does, how do things change with 135mm? Now, I do use longer focal lengths in some of my architectural work, uh, particularly if I know the client wants detailing as well. So I will take detail shots, but this is one where I would use a zoom because I will decide on the framing I want for a particular shot and use it for that. So here um, it it's looks relatively straight. There's no obvious convergence. It's a long focal length. You don't tend to need movements on long lenses. It's not a problem. Now, another regular site that I test lenses on. Um, the 135 belt, this shows that there is minimal geometric distortion on the lens. Um, it's quite good. Now, I'm sure if I was to buy a modern 135 mil lens, um, I would have even better sharpness. I would have all kinds of better things about it. But do I really care? No. A reminder again, this was a £7.50 lens. Um, so... You know, it owes me nothing. Um, I did actually get two lenses uh, when I got this. I got two for £15. I have a 200mm as well. Now, that I've used for a few shots, and that is interesting in that it has serious internal reflections. Now, I'll, I'll cover that when I next have another look at a lens. But um, literally, there is an area inside the lens where if you're pointing a bright sky or the sun up here, light coming in the lens here reflects off the internal parts of the lens and gives a veiled look to the image. This one, fine. Now, if I used this much, I'd probably put a short lens hood on it just to improve the contrast. Remember 1975 lens, the coatings that were in use, there are coatings on this one, you can see from the color when you reflect the light off, uh, the coatings are relatively basic compared with what you get today. Um, and in fact, one of the reasons lenses that we get today can be so complex and have so many different elements in them is the improvement in lens coatings. Uh, you in old lens designs, you could not put lots of pieces of glass together because you would lose so much light in the process. Uh, modern lens coatings are vastly improved. And add to that computer design and you get lenses we're seeing now are phenomenal compared with lenses of just 10, 15 years ago. Uh, it really is quite a difference. However, something like this shows that you don't actually necessarily need that for taking photos. Uh, it just depends what you want to do. So there's the view of the gallery. Another shot I regularly use, a uh, much larger shot. Um, there is no problem with flare on this. Um, I did try and get some shots with the sun just catching the edge of the lens. Um, I could see virtually nothing on it. You don't get a, a, this, a lens like this, you don't get the same amounts of flare and internal reflection that you get off wider angle lenses. So it works fine. Um, the color from it looks perfectly good, but you know, I can adjust that when I process my raw images. So quick check, and I mentioned flare and looking at some. This is uh, just catching the edge of the sun, of the sun on, the tr on this tree here. Um, and the detail, looking at this image here, I can see that longitudinal chromatic aberration, 
Other aberrations are very low on this. The one thing I did notice with the lens, when it's wide open, it's a little bit prone to purple fringing, but once again, easily fixable in RAW processing. I used Adobe Camera Raw on this, fixed it no problem. Um, there is no real issues here. There's a few spikes off it. Um, you would, if you really pushed it on point sources of light at night, you might, with the 12 blade um, aperture here, you might be able to get some sun spikes on it, but it's gonna be tricky to do. It doesn't show it much, it does a little bit here, but it's mainly the purple, uh, purple edging and that's fixable, few pixels worth. Chromatic aberrations, no big problem either. Um, so it just works. As I said, detail, something I would use it for. Um, I can see a, a use for this lens in that if I'm on a job and I don't think I need a long lens with me, I might take just a 17 and 24 mil lens. Uh, this is small enough, light enough that I could pop this in the camera bag. So I've got 135 if I need it. Um, I've actually got quite a few of these old 135 lenses and I've looked at some others. There are some links in the notes for the video, but just occasionally forgetting detail here. Um, this is EF mount. Um, I could use this on my 5DS. Focusing is a lot trickier on DSLRs. Um, with mirrorless cameras, it's much easier, say with the focus peaking, so it's easier to use there. But yeah, just some detail of a building there. And that's useful stuff. As, you know, structures like this. Quite often I'm doing pictures for construction companies. And in sort of going out, this is a place that I've actually uh, photographed near here on paying work. And I'm thinking, you know, what would I do with this? Yeah, I'm just gonna pick out some details. So here we go, there's the DMU logo on the corner of a building. One thing you do have to be careful of when you're picking out details on things is they show up um, less than perfect construction features. So if you want to see stuff where paneling hasn't been set up quite right or anything, go for the details like this. Um, whether people necessarily want to use the pictures when you've done that, don't know. That's up to them. Normal longer shots of some buildings and that. Um, at this point, let's see, I'm thinking, well, okay, I've tested, it's a nice lens. What shall I take some pictures of? And I'm literally just looking around thinking, well, are there any interesting views or any bits and pieces? Um, it was nowhere near as varied as I perhaps might have hoped because, well, there weren't many people about and I wasn't gonna start suddenly developing an interest in portrait photography, just taking pictures of random people. Um, I've done it in the past, I just don't do it much. So I'm looking at buildings and the likes. So interesting reflections. Reflections of traffic here, modern building, old building put together. Uh, just slightly different views. And these are views that I've taken pictures at some of these locations using all kinds of lenses, but never anything this long. So it just encouraged me to look at things a little bit differently. Uh, and I'm looking at the shapes, I'm looking at the relationship between objects, things like that. A view of a chair. Now this would be a picture that would be of use for people who did the landscaping for this particular project here. Um, so there are interests for pictures like this, but when it comes to, I'm just wandering around taking some snaps. Um, and it doesn't have to be too serious. Um, I was seeing some stuff the other day talking about photographic style. Um, now the examples that were picked, uh, they were definitely a style and almost all of them I disliked. So yeah, this photographer had achieved a style, whatever that is. Um, it might even be commercially successful, but I can't say it was one I was kind of a, a, at all inclined to explore or emulate. Uh, it just wasn't something I like. Now, I always say, if you're stuck for inspiration, get old photography books or anything and just flick through them. Um, I never recommend Instagram for this because Instagram, all you'll do is you'll perfect a style that works on Instagram. Great if you want to do that, but I seriously don't care about such stuff. Um, but get photography books. You don't even have to know who they're by. It helps, you can have a look, but 
I will admit most of my uh, photography books, older ones than that, I remember them by the pictures in them, not the photographer. Sorry, photographers, I just don't remember names very well. I remember images. Um, I have difficulty enough in remembering real people's names, yet alone photographers. So never ask me who my greatest influencers are. I can point you to some pictures, but I can't tell you the names of who took them or anything like that. Um, that's the sort of stuff that you have to perfect if you're going to do a photography degree or something like that. I've got no qualifications whatsoever in photography, uh, never really wanted any, um, and I don't think it's really done me any harm. Um, others might disagree, well it's up to you. But just ordinary snaps of going around, and I'll finish off here with a couple of pictures of just down the river. Um, a nice picture of a swan. Um, now. One of the, some of these pictures I've taken here quite deliberately knowing that the next time I get a large printer to review, I'm going to be looking at taking some of these 26 megapixel pictures from uh, this particular camera here, the EOS RP, and printing them large. So I wanted a range of photos with different kinds of issues, problems with them. Now this one, I mentioned how difficult it was to rapidly focus this lens. Uh, there are one or two areas. The point of uh, optimal focus is actually slightly in front of this one. So this would need some processing, some sharpening and some work on it. But I wanted to have, yeah, get some pictures. Uh, it wasn't deliberate, that just, yeah, I would ideally like to have it perfectly sharp, but it isn't. So how will I deal with that? I'll come back to that when I look at printing some of these images. And uh, last of all, a uh, rather nice one where uh, the auto exposure just decided, I put this on auto, um, auto ex exposure, so I put it on aperture priority mode here, and um, it's perfectly exposed the feathers in the bright sunlight, which is good and it's left the background nice and dark. So it's another picture I'll explore for printing and things. So, you know, is it worth getting old lenses? Yeah, of course it is. £7.50. Now, all right, the adapter will cost you a few quid as well. Um, get some old stuff. I've done some other videos looking at other lenses and stuff, and what I would say is that if they get you out taking some photos, taking a few different photos, then it's done its job. Uh, I do need to give my photography a good shove. Uh, part of that comes from um, the obvious issues that we've all had with the pandemic. I've not been able to get out that much. Um, I've had um, some issues in walking more than a mile or so. I have to, I have to rest a bit, some, some back problems. So that has built together and it means I'm in a sort of slight dissatisfied state about photography. I want to get out and do more. Um, weather looks nice. I think it's about time I actually just went out and took some photos. Anyway, I hope these ramblings are of some interest. Uh, please do feel free to comment. Um, I think some of these, I, it's, I'm getting close to I ought to put a load of these lenses on eBay. I'll save one or two, but I've filled up a drawer full of lenses and I think it's probably time I got a shot of a few of them. Anyway, thanks again and please do subscribe to the channel if you find it interesting.